Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. This is Matt, and today we work a problem from the EPI Civil Exam dealing with statistics. The question asks, a company manufactures air conditioning units that have an average lifespan of 25 years. A sample of 15 of these units was randomly selected, and the average lifespan of the units in the sample was 19 years, with a standard deviation of 10.83 years. What is the probability that 15 randomly selected units would have a lifespan of no more than 19 years? So, in order to successfully solve this problem, we need to first realize that we're being asked about a sample. And in the problem statement, we're given the standard deviation of the sample, and that's given as 10.83 years. So, whenever we're given the standard deviation, of a sample, we know, or we need to know, that that means we're supposed to use the t distribution. And so if we turn to the FE Reference Handbook, and at the time of this recording, we're using version 10.2 of the FE Reference Handbook, and we're going to look specifically on page 75 and 77 dealing with the t distributions. So what we're going to do is we first need to find on page 75 the t statistic equation. And so we see the equation given for the t statistic or t variable is equal to x bar minus mu naught over the standard deviation over the square root of n. So what we need to do is plug in our variables and solve for the t variable and we'll call this step one. So let's look at what we're given in the problem statement. We know that x bar is the sample mean which is given as 19 years so we'll write that in minus mu naught mu naught is the population mean and the population mean in this case was given in the problem statement as an average lifespan of 25 years is the population mean then in the denominator, we will look at the standard deviation. And so the standard deviation is given as 10.83 years, the problem statement. And then that will di be divided by n, which is the sample size. And it says that the sample size in this case was 15 units. So that's the square root of 15. So we work this out and we get a t value, or t score equal to negative 2.145. Now when we turn to the PE reference handbook on page 77 we see the t chart, t score distribution, there's a chart there, a graph, and it looks sort of like this, right? We have bell-shaped curve, zero is in the middle and you see this area here is highlighted and because of that because of the symmetry excuse me the symmetry of the chart you see that the negative of this value doesn't matter so we got negative 2.145 but for the purposes of the chart because it's symmetrical we can consider that as 2.145 so the next step what we need to do is look at the degrees of freedom because so if we see down the left side of the uh, chart on page 77, there are numbers ranging from 1 to 30, and then the last row is infinity. And so that's the degrees of freedom, and that's going to tell us what row we need to be looking at. So we're going to solve for the degrees of freedom, and degrees of freedom, we're expected to know that that is equal to the sample size n minus 1. It's always going to be what the degrees of freedom are equal to. So in this case, we said our sample size is 15 units minus 1. 
So that means our degrees of freedom for this problem is 14. So we're going to look at that table on page 77. We're going to look at that far left column and go down to 14. And then we're going to follow that row across and look for our t value of 2.145. And looking at that table, we go to the t table. That row label is 14. Look across at 2.145. 145, right, because that's our t value we found in step one. So if we look at that 2.145 value where that occurs, that column where that number occurs is 0 0.025. And so what that means is that there's a 2.5% chance that the lifespan will be no more than 19 years. Write that down just to keep us on track. So if we look back here at the problem statement and we look at our answer choices, we see that that is equivalent to answer choice C, 2.5%. And we've solved this problem successfully. So the T distribution can be tricky, but if we know how to work through it and what it's asking us and keeping in mind that key that if we're given the standard deviation of a sample, we know we need to use the T distribution, that will help us keep us on track and guide us to the right solution. So if you're looking for more practice, head on over to civilengineeringacademy.com and check out our ultimate FE civil exam review course, and we'll see you there.